All right, stopped off here in uh, Lakeland, Florida. Again, uh, you know, home of sun and fun. But on the other side of the runway, we've got uh, kind of a new design that's flying over in Australia for several years, but it's the Aeropup. It has made it over to the USA, and they're starting to sell kits right now. Hello, uh, my name is Don Fielden. Welcome to Lakeland, Florida. I'm the owner of Fielden Aero. Uh, we manufacture and, and sell the Aero Pup here in the, in the U.S. This airplane is uh, originally from Australia and there's about 65 to 75 of these things flying that, that for sure. And I've secured the rights to manufacture and sell this thing here in the U.S. All right, so let's talk for a moment about the construction methods used in the Aeropup. Okay, uh, I, I like to say that the Aeropup is, is a little over-engineered. It's designed to be a very rugged airplane where you can fly into and out of just about any place where there's flat land. So as part of that ruggedness in the design is we'll start with the wing here. The, the wing is a, is a three spar wing, so it has a leading edge spar. Then it has a, a web spar, which is design that uh, is unique to the Aero Pup, and that you got the spar with extruded webbing running down the center of the spar. So that gives it strength compared to weight. So more strength and less weight compared to the typical hollow spar. And the web spar here is what carries the primary loads for the airplane. Then we also have a trailing edge spar here as well for, for, uh, for a rigidity of the, of the wing. Uh, we have, each wing has 12 uh, CNC machined uh, ribs here from aircraft, uh, uh, aircraft grade plywood. Uh, the leading edges are, are, are aluminum, uh, comprised of aluminum, and then the whole wing is wrapped, in this case, with Ortex. You can wrap, you can wrap the wing, or you can wrap the airplane in any, any covering material of your choice. This one we happen to go with Ortex. All right, so we covered the wing. What is the, uh, the fuselage uh, composed of here? So the fuselage is a welded steel cage, if you will, from, from chromoly uh, steel. Uh, designed to hold two, two people. So you got the pilot and you got the co-pilot, so it's a two-seat aircraft. Uh, in, this case, in this particular case, it's a conventional uh, landing configuration airplane. We're about, we'll soon release a, uh, a version of the fuselage that allows you to go both tricycle gear and conventional gear. But the first several kits that we'll release to the public will be conventional gear configuration. A uh, very rugged steel cage provides plenty of, uh, of room inside the cockpit. The room inside the cockpit here is about one inch wider then a Cessna 172, for those that are familiar with the, with the insides of the 172. Uh, the, uh, it, 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 the, this is another aspect of what we call an over-engineered fuselage by chance. So the good news is there's never been a safety issue with this airplane other than some ground loops and e even then minor repair actions and the airplane's back in the air. And that's a tribute to the engineering and the ruggedness of the airframe itself. Uh, We'll also offer this soon with, uh, with floats, and, and the good news is it requires no modification on the fuselage to do that. So it is a very rugged, well-engineered, well-designed fuselage. So how is the controls made up, uh, built up on this aircraft? So yeah, okay, and just excuse the mess on the inside here. We're still doing some polishing up as we get, get her ready for the first flight here in the U.S. But the, uh, the control system on this version of the Aeropup and the initial versions consist of a control stick located in the center of the cockpit. So either the left seated passenger or the right seated passenger could fly. Also makes for getting in and out of the airplane significantly easier. So your typical elevator, so it's push-pull tube that goes from the control stick back to the elevator for rugged control of the elevator. And then we use push-pull cables here. You can see part of it, you can see the assembly here for the ailerons where the control stick via the torque tube is connected to the push-pull control cables which route out through the wing and then out to the elevators themselves. A uh, important, important design point of this system is that the airplane itself, the wings are foldable. So you can pull a pin out the front, pull a safety pin down here at the strut, 
and then the wing folds back and it does that without having to disconnect any of the control cables or any of the fuel lines. All right, and jumping underneath the plane here, I'm going to point out the, the not-so-oleo oleos <laughs> you've got on your aircraft. Explain what you've used here. The not-so-oleo oleos. Yeah, this is, a, this is a special recipe we come up with. We make these things in-house out of a special polyurethane-like material. So you, you, you take our recipe and then you pour it in a donut and you put it in a vacuum chamber to suck out the air and you let that thing sit for 24 hours and voila, you come out with a very, very, very... Uh, good shock absorbing quality here at, at, at low cost. This is, the, this is what is standard on the kits. Uh, as an option, we'll provide a hydraulic shock absorber for this thing for those, of the, for those pilots that really want to drop this thing in and out of rough areas. This is perfect for flying out of traditional airfields. If you want to fly in rough areas, we'll, put, we'll offer you a hydraulic shock that you can install in this as well. If I could come on up here real quick, I forgot to mention about the fuselage, the side panels here. It's all about ease, ease of flying and ease of maintenance. So this, this, uh, this panel right here is an example. It's a, you can remove the entire side panel here with just screws and then get full access to the rudder pedal area. The rudder pedals themselves are adjustable for, for the differing heights of the pilots and the, and the passenger and also give you full access up to the avionics stack behind the instrument panel up underneath there. All right, moving to the rear of the airplane, explain a little bit about the assembly of the tail section and you've got uh, um, some servos for um, trim. That's right. So, so the, the rudder or the vertical stabilizer is, is part of the fuselage structure of itself. It's not removable, but the, hydro or the horizontal stabilizer assembly is removable. And again, it's all about ease of maintenance. So three bolts secure the horizontal stabilizer to the fuselage structure, one, two, and the third one back there. And so you can, you can remove the entire horizontal stabilizer, disconnecting the push rod out from the airplane without having to worry about damaging any of the covering material on the airplane itself. In the case of the elevator here, uh, in case we didn't see it up front, it's, it's, it's driven by a, by a control tube uh, mounted here, connected here, runs through the cockpit and mounts to the control stick direct. So no slop in the elevator, no slop in the, between the control stick and the elevator. The rudder itself, it's a, the size of the rudder gives you very good rudder authority for, for this type of airplane. And it's, a, it's connected to your rudder pedals up front via the steel cables right here. In this case, this is, a, this is an example of the more robust tail wheel. It, that's an option for this kit here, but it is a steerable tail wheel connected to the, to the arm up here on the rudder. One of the U.S. unique features of, of this Aero Pup is the uh, introduction of a fuel tank bay. So the original design of the Aero Pup, it was, it was fabric covering from the tip to the root, and then the fuel tank itself was riveted to the main spar and the trailing edge spar, which makes it very difficult from a maintenance standpoint. And we're all about ease of maintenance, ease of flying. So we did a modification here to where the covering now goes from the wing tip to this, this root uh, wing rib right here. And then what we've done is created a fuel tank bay. The fuel tank is secured in place with fuel tank straps, similar to what you see on decathlon or, or, uh, or a Cessna or some traditional airplanes. Uh, help, and then the top skin itself is secured in place using screws. So if you ever need to do maintenance on your fuel tank, you just unscrew the top skin, aluminum skin, pull it off, and then you've got full access to the fuel tank itself, remove the straps, and you can take the fuel tank out of the, uh, out, out of the wing. No de-riveting and re-riveting required. Also on the bottom of the wing, there's a aluminum skin all right on the bottom of the fuel tank bay and, and we did that so if you ever develop a, a leak in your fuel tank well the gas is leaking onto the aluminum surface and not your your fabric so uh, much easier to take care of when the leaks are constrained to just the aluminum surface with the pinhole out the back to let it drain out we are partnering with great companies like dynon avionics at dynon.com airtech coatings at airtechcoatings.com Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video.
and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. The instrument panel obviously is an example because it's very customizable, but what do you got in your your demonstrator here? So this is a, this happens to be a, a avionics package that we offer with the kit as an option, but you're exactly right. There are infinite combinations of what you can do for your panel. This particular one here, it's designed to be simple and gives me full control. I'm kind of old fashioned. I like switches for everything and I've got circuit breakers. So you see the circuit breakers on the right with master circuit breakers up on top. We've got our switches here. I don't have them labeled yet, but it controls the engine computer, it controls the avionics stack. That's the black boxes, if you will, that's hidden behind the instrument panel. Another switch controls everything that's on the instrument panel itself. Uh, uh, this is the Dynon HDX 7 inch display. Man, I love this thing. It provides everything you need to know to fly your airplane. All, all the engine parameters, your attitude, your navigation. Uh, this is the comm radio right here. This is a knob panel, so you can change settings on the HDX without having to navigate through a, a menu. You can change heading, you could change your altimeter setting and whatnot from the knob panel. And this is an intercom here, so we have headphone jacks for the pilot and for the co-pilot. And this just allows us to talk to each other uh, via, the, uh, via the headphones. This button right here is the starter. Of course, we have throttle with the control stick in the middle. You, you always want, want to have one hand on the stick and one hand on the throttle. So with the control stick in the middle, we put throttles on the left and right side. So whichever side's flying, they have access to, a, to the throttle. This uh, little device right here, just one of my favorite as a matter of fact, this is a, a prop control. This particular airplane comes equipped with an in-flight adjustable pitch propeller. And this is the uh, control head for that. You can either manually adjust the pitch by flipping this switch right here, or you can put it in automatic mode by flipping this switch up and then just setting your RPM and basically turns it into a constant speed prop. So there's not necessarily a base model for this particular airplane, but the, the typical models for the airplanes that have flown in Australia, uh, of course includes Jabiru, which is an Australian engine, uh, D-motor, Rotax, there's been VW conversions, there's been a couple of O200 conversions used on the airplanes. Those are the most popular ones. There's a couple of one-offs beyond that, but those are the usual range or types of engines that fly in this airplane. The horsepower range is typically 80 to 100 horsepower. As long as you have an engine within that range, it's perfect for this airplane. There's a couple of versions of the Aero Pups that are flying with 65 horsepower. I'm not sure I'd recommend that, but it does it does work. You need some longer takeoff runs and whatnot. But, so 80 to 100 horsepower range is the right power range for the airplane. Then you come to this one. So this one, this our demo here, which we're going to demonstrate the far right of the spectrum envelope for this airplane. This engine allows us to do that. This is a UL350IS engine made by UL Power out of Belgium. Uh, this particular engine is 130 horsepower, which is way more than you need for an airplane of, of this size or this class. But uh, we intend to do some short takeoff and landing competitions with it and that you can do that with this engine. Additionally, with this engine, your takeoff runs are on the order of less than 100 feet. Uh, this engine drives, in the case of our demo model here, drives a three-bladed in-flight adjustable pitch propeller. As I mentioned earlier, we did a tour of the avionics panel where uh, you can go to climb pitch, to cruise pitch, just by, just by setting the, the, uh, the propeller settings using the control head on the instrument panel itself. It's a three-bladed prop because with this much power, to drive a two-bladed prop, the, the, the prop diameter would be too long and it didn't give us the prop clearance that, that we would want for an airplane that's designed to fly in and out of rough airfields. So that forces us to go to a three-bladed propeller assembly here. All right, let's talk about the typical performance specs of the Aeropup. Obviously, you'll share this 
UL power performance once you get airborne, but what has been the typical uh, performance uh, specifications? But typically, if you're in the 80 to 100 horsepower range, you're going to cruise at about 105 knots, uh, 105 miles an hour, excuse me. You're going to take off and land in about 400 feet of runway. Uh, the the gross weight on this airplane is 1,650 pounds. Uh, you can certainly fly with a sports pilot certificate if you placard it to where you won't fly beyond 1,310 pounds. But the airplane, so that gives you about, a, if you fly it in normal or experimental amateur built category, you have, a, you have a useful payload of about 1,000 pounds if you're with an engine, you know, an engine that's between the 80 and 100 horsepower range. It stalls at 35 miles per hour with full flaps. Uh, I, I don't recall what the stall speed is with, with flaps uh, not, not extended, but, but still about 35 miles an hour with, with flaps extended. So very easy to fly, very easy to handle airplane. We've walked all around your airplane. Now tell us how, how much it costs to get into it. Ah, okay. Well, I'll tell you, that, so the, 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 right now, the cost of our kit is $18,000. If you're interested, get it quick because we're going to be forced to raise prices uh, soon given the, the cost of all the materials that we, that we require to build this airplane are also increasing the cost of shipping. Right now it's $18,000, which, uh, which is the lower end of the cost envelope, if you will, for, for aviation, which was the kind of the philosophy of our business is we wanted to, I'm retired Air Force, uh, I always knew I was going to start a kit plane business. And I knew I wanted to focus in at the, at the left end of the cost envelope so we can get more people involved in flying. So it's not a rich man's sport or a rich woman's sport. It should be a fun sport that everybody can easily afford to get into. So we hope that this Aeropup allows you to do that. But the kit, with the base kit price of $18,000, that gives you the firewall back minus the covering, minus the avionics, of course, and minus the hydraulics. Uh, we offer all that stuff, extra stuff as options. We offer firewall Ford packages. We offer avionics packages as optional add-ons. The hydraulic tow brakes, the, that, that stuff we do offer it as, as options. Uh, and we also offer the covering material as options. Right now, the only covering material that we offer with this airplane is Oratex. So if you're a, a fan of Oratex, or want to become a fan of Ortex, then we will uh, provide that, that, that covering material to you as an optional add-on. If you want to learn more about it, uh, you can go out to our website at aeropupusa.com, A-E-R-O-P-U-P-U-S-A.com, aeropupusa.com. Uh, you can call me on my phone just about any time at 540-229-5528. And then I also have email address dfielden at fieldenarrow.com.